and Father in heaven, because Jesus lives, we all live by grace through faith in him. Thank you, Father, for everything that you have done and continue to do for us. Bless us during this service, through your word, through your sacrament, through music, through song, through prayer. We ask that your priests and presence would strengthen us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. John 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this beautiful Mother's Day. Amen? Amen. So good to have all of you here in person, celebrating with your moms, hopefully, or maybe you're thinking of your mom who's no longer with you, or you're thankful for your current mom. And It's a good day to remember the love that moms have for their children. Sometimes it's hard to imagine you know, the love that moms have for their kids, especially when they're messing up and they're screwing up and they're making all kinds of bad choices and decisions. But there you still have moms just kind of bringing home that unconditional love. And I'm so grateful that my mom did that for me and my twin brother and my older brother too, because half the time we were OC, we were out of control, <laughs> you know. And dad worked either on the East Coast or the West Coast. So he, every two weeks we got to see him and mom was sort of a single parent, but she, uh, she put up with a lot. Well, I'm, I'm full of them. I'm full of acronyms. So I'm going to give a quick one to you this morning and then I'm going to go ahead and sit down. How does that sound? Because uh, I know I've been inspired today and hopefully you guys have too. I am so grateful. I am so thankful for the goodness of God, for the mercy of God, for the pardon of God, for the forgiveness of God, and for the love of God. Amen? Amen. Because only God has perfect love for us. Why? Because He's holy, because He's perfect, because He's, He's righteous, He's without sin. Our love sometimes breaks down. And love is not a feeling. Yes, we like to have loving feelings, we like to have loving emotions, don't we? But at the end of the day, love is a decision. I choose to love in the name of Jesus. He says, I love you, therefore you can love others. I did not... You did not choose me, but I chose you to go and bear much fruit. And we know the greatest definition of love, by the way, if you got 10 people in a room and said, hey, tell me what you think about love, you might get nine or 10 different responses, would you not? The best definition of love is right in the Word of God. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and it says that love is patient and love is kind. It is not rude, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not self-seeking, it is not proud. And I like this one. It keeps no record of wrongs. Amen? And because I like to do that once in a while. How about you? I remember when you said that to me. I remember when you put me down. I remember when you stabbed me in the back. How dare you? I'm going to get back at you. Thank goodness God doesn't divorce us. Thank goodness God doesn't say, you, know, you keep on doing the same thing over and over again. I am tired of you. Get out of my face. He doesn't do that. I love you. I forgive you, I've claimed you, I've adopted you, I've chosen you to be my very own. And I'm going to forgive you, hoping that you will forgive others. L in the letter love is love everybody. And I don't mean just the people who are nice to you, the people who are kind to you, the people that forgive you, the people that are there for you. I'm talking about your enemies. The people who don't care for you, and I know you don't have anybody that doesn't care for you. Because I sure don't. I don't have any enemies. I never have. Pinocchio knows. As the Scriptures say, it's easy to forgive those who forgive you. To care for those who care for you. But pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Reach out to them. Because when you do, it says in the book of Romans, it's like heaping burning coals upon their head. In fact, I'd encourage you, and I've done this once in a while when I have the pride and courage, because sometimes I don't, go and sit down next to your enemy. You know that person that can't stand you, that doesn't like you, that's angry at you? Go sit next to that person and smile at them. How are you doing today? They can't stand it. It just hacks them off because they want you to be at the same place they're at stubborn and resentful and bitter and grudgeful. So when you go up to them and smile and say, just thinking about you today, how are you? That's a good way to tick a person off, isn't it? <laughs> Try that with your spouse. <laughs> 
Love your enemies. Who did it perfectly for us? Jesus did. He's in our example. And the letter O in love is to overcome. Overcome evil with good. People do bad things to us. And what do we want to do? Bad things to them. People take advantage of us. And what's the first thing I'm thinking of? How can I take advantage of them? People talk trash about me. Guess what I want to do towards them? <laughs> That's called sin, is it not? In the Greek, it's hamartia, which means missing the mark. And we all miss the mark. None of us passes the exam. None of us gets out of this life sin-free. We were conceived and born in it, and we're tainted with it. But thank goodness of God's mercy, of God's pardon, of His forgiveness. He doesn't hold it against us. Instead, He held it against the One who was sin-free, the One who was holy, and the One who was perfect became sin for us. He who knew no sin, so that we could be right with God. Amen? He overcame evil with good. How about V in the letter, in the word love? Vengeance. Vengeance is the Lord's. Leviticus 19, verse 18. Do not seek revenge or hold a grudge against someone. Any grudge bearers in the house today? <laughs> I know how to keep one in my sinful pride, in my stubbornness, thinking that I know it all, thinking I'm better than other people, that I'm right and they're wrong. Real easy to go that direction, isn't it? If someone's done you wrong, let the Lord take care of it. Amen? He'll handle matters. He knows how to do it. He knows how to work in their life. He knows how to convict people with the Holy Spirit, but also convict them with the Gospel that they're freed and forgiven in Jesus. Leave vengeance to the Lord. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as God wanted them to be. We're one body, but we're many parts. We don't want to slam other people. We don't want to put them down. We don't want to carry on in ways that displease and dishonor the Lord. And that's why, E, we try to emulate Jesus. We try to have the same attitude of Jesus. It says that in Philippians chapter 2. It's one of the few times that the word attitude is used in the New Testament. Have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. We want to emulate Jesus. His perfect life. We want to carry out His will and walk in His ways. And in today's families particularly, love requires special attention on this Mother's Day as we think about our moms. I remember a uh, family when our kids were small, we had this on our fridge. It says, uh, what, a, what does a mother do for her child? She changes 4,380 diapers, leaving a few for dad. She gets awakened 1,625 times from sleep. She prepares 2,920 bottles. She plays hide-and-seek 730 times. She gives her child 2,555 baths, knowing her child could use 10,555 more. <laughs> she will pick up and hold her child 91,000 times, maybe two at once, equally 95 pounds of clinging joy. She will clean up after her child 40,000 times, smiling at her little one's industriousness. By the time a child reaches the age of 12, a mother has made 4,015 peanut butter sandwiches, wiped up 16,240 soils, sung 2,950 songs, said prayers 12,700 times, and read 8,760 books, some as many as 87 times each. A mother will hug her child 46,720 times, kiss him 17,520 times, and give 116,800 love pats. She will say, I love you to her child at least 21,900 times and will always wish she said it more often. As mothers, it continues on. We do whatever needs to be done for each child at a time. We accept this inconvenience, rocking our children in the middle of the night, racing out of work early to take our children to the doctor. We also deal with the unpleasant cleaning up the mess after a child projectile vomits in bed all over the wall and floor. Somehow, regardless of how tough a situation is, when it keeps coming to our children, we're 300% rolling with the punches, keeping our sense of humor, and in countless ways, showing our children by our example the kind of love that Jesus has for us. 
So today as we remember our moms and we think about our moms and we honor our moms and we say, I love you to our moms, we realize as Christ followers where Christian moms get their love from. They get their love from God. They get their help from God. They get their strength, their support, and their endurance for the God who has done all those things and many more for them. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Christian moms. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.